So many of the farms and ranches and farm-related businesses we talk about have been in the same family for more than a century. Such is the case of a brewery in the heart of Minnesota, a brewery that's found success producing specialized beers. After just a few minutes in the small town of New Ulm, Minnesota, you see how deep the German heritage here runs. Outdoor speakers pipe German music throughout downtown, and on most afternoons you'll find New Ulmers at B&L Bar throwing back their favorite beverage. Gentlemen, I'm good. Locally brewed August Shell beer is king around these parts. No surprise since it's been brewed here since almost as long as New Ulm has been a city. No, not at all. German immigrant August Schell came to the U.S. in 1856, and four years later he was brewing beer on the banks of the Minnesota River. Obviously it's a, it was a 100% German town back then, and uh, he was producing lager beers, and he was a smart man and a good brewer, and actually brought his son Otto Schell, who was a brewmaster. And after Otto Schell died, the brewery was in the hands of George and Emma Marty, August Schell's daughter, then Alfred Marty, Warren Marty, and in 1985, Ted Marty. Five generations later, and uh, we're still here. We, we almost got burned down in the uh, Dakota uprising, and we survived World War I, Depression, uh, Prohibition. Today, the brewery stands on the same site August Schell started brewing 148 years ago. Fifteen styles of beer are made here, from Shell's Dark to a Pale Ale. The brewery is listed on the National Register of Historic Sites and open for tours. Well, Ted, I'm kind of getting excited about a taste test yeah. here. Are we there yet or not? Not quite, okay. not quite. So, we'll get there. Brewing beer hasn't changed much since August Shell's time, but because they're producing 80,000 barrels a year, the process is pretty streamlined now. Barley is shipped from farm fields in the western U.S. to a malting facility and then to Shell's brew house. Four kettles are used for the first steps in turning malted barley into a frothy brew. This is the mashing. That's nice yep. and hot. Yep. So we bring the grain in from up above and then we actually mix it with water. Look at that. And then uh, we start to heat it. And what that heat does, heat and water activate the enzymes in this malted barley and convert the starch to sugar. So the Montana barley farmer who's got that two row barley, yep. he can take pride in what's uh, stirring right in here right now, right? You, you bet. But this is called wort, the liquid that's gonna come out of here. Called what? Wort. Wort, W-O-R-T. And after the first kettle, the wort moves on to another tank called a lauter ton. To lauter in German means to separate. So we're separating the spent grains or the residual grain from the liquid. So this here is the uh, barley after it's gone through the process. You might be wondering where this uh, malted barley is uh, headed to in the back of this truck. Well, it's going to go to a local dairy farm. And there's going to be some happy cows because this is pretty good feed. This is the wort and you can taste it here. I, I think I was mentioning that Sometimes if you were sick and had a cold, sometimes they'd give you a little fresh wort fresh to wort. heal you up. So it's got So this is pre-fermentation. There's pre no alcohol in this. So you've got sugar in there, you've got some vitamins and so forth. So I can see why you wouldn't put this in a bottle and sell it. It's not quite ready yet. No, no. <laughs> and after it's boiled and hops are added for bitterness and flavor. Is it beer yet? No, nope, not beer yet. Wort. Just called still it beer. Wort. It's still wort. The wort is off to be fermented for up to 10 days and then aged in cellars for several weeks. For beer lovers, it's worth the wait. One, two, three, four. And no brewery tour is complete without a stop at the tasting room. Well, Ted, I guess you would call this the payoff. And this is the payoff, <laughs> you're, you bet. Shell light. Shell light. And, um, That's pretty light. It's pretty easy to drink. Pretty easy to drink. Yeah. Next one is our, like our original. So those are good. So, so now we're going to move on to the premium. And this is um, called Grain Belt. Grain Belt Premium. Makes sense mm -hmm. for where we're at here, right? Right. It didn't take long for Ted to figure out I'm no beer expert. But it's got a good taste. Yeah. Yeah, it tends to be sweet, malty. Yeah. Um, you throw a, uh, what, you throw an orange in there? 
orange well, slice. I'm not a fruit guy, but you could. I <laughs> Throw an orange slice in there. And, there and, yeah. yeah. But as I sampled more of Ted's brews, the Pilsners, the dark, the seasoned specialties, I came to appreciate the rich history here, why the new Omers are proud of their locally brewed beer. We try to highlight uh, what we think is our strength, and that's our history and our heritage. And we try to do it in a fun, new Ulm way. Of course, it hasn't always been fun and froth around here. Prohibition forced more than 1,000 breweries across the U.S. out of business. Shells survived by brewing other sodas, non-alcoholic beer, and making candies. And the year that Prohibition started is now immortalized in the kegs of 1919 root beer that roll off the line. It's Dar Chelsea's job to fill and cork the kegs before they go out the door. Right here, right there. Bung in this hand. Okay. Cover it with your hand. So you just slip it in and then whack. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna try to fill this one. Okay. Okay, so drop it in. Yep. <laughs> now, what do I do? Oh. Here we go. Is that right? Good. It smells like root beer. It's a little bit of a mess. Yeah, it is. Uh, and when I get home, girlfriend there like the sweetest man on earth. <laughs> yep. Whether it's a family-owned brewery, a farm, or a ranch, it's all part of the bedrock of the heartland, and it's worth both supporting and preserving. So next time, instead of that motel out along the interstate, look for a place like this farm bed and breakfast. I think you'll find it time well spent. And that's our show for today. We thank you for watching. I'm Paul Ryan, and we want to see you next time right here in America's Heartland.